The Department of Justice found that there are 30,700 gangs responsible for 2,363 homicides. Even in small towns, gang problems have tripled since before 1990. Facebook is the number one communication tool utilized by gangs. Even police are targeted. In 2014, an officer was murdered by an Arizona gang as retaliation for a case against them. Drug sales, assault, and robbery are main crimes committed by gangs nationwide. With these issues growing every year, there's a greater need for intervention. Enter Amy Williams, AKA the Hope Dealer, who's dedicated her life to help gang members get out of the gang culture. There was this uh, one young man, at the age of 11, he, he got his first court case for having a gun. When he got older, he had a child, and having that child made him want to do life different. We walked through the process and got him out of the gang and started discipling him, and last year he was trying to help a friend. was murdered. What brings me peace is that for everything that he's been through, his soul is completely healed. As for Amy, to me, Amy is love. You know, she shows us the love that many of us never got because the things that she does, nobody else will go into these neighborhoods and do. Not politicians, not other community leaders, no one. But for you to be able to do that, you have to have heart. We're losing a generation. It's not one kid here, one kid here. We're in the thousands of young black men that could change this world that we're losing to the street. Our next guest believes it's her calling to open the door to her home, even welcome gang members and convicts into it. She is the true definition of a hero. Would you please welcome Amy Williams, the hope dealer. <laughs> Oh, Amy, I, I love that while Thank many you. people are on the streets as a dope dealer, you are on the streets as a hope dealer. That's right. They're slinging that dope, and I'm giving that hope, and his name is Jesus. How in the world did this ever start for you? I mean, this is, it's not like somebody says, you know, I think I'd like to go out in the streets in Chicago. Right. And it just... Talk to gang people. Yeah, I mean, there's not a line out the door for this kind of work. No, but there's not. I've always <laughs> um, been the person that had a heart for the underdog and mm -hmm. for people that uh, society kind of sees as worthless and not of value. And I'm like, but if given a chance, they could. But my brother, also my best friend in the entire world, was a gang member himself. Mm. And I know the, the pain of what that looks like and as a family and just how people were treating him. And I've also seen on the other end how he's come out of it. Why did he ever get into a gang? What was the, the lure of that? You know, there are so many reasons why young people find themselves in these situations. And it can be everything from trauma, but mostly it's because it gives them a sense of belonging to something. Hmm. Right? And if the church isn't out there saying, well, come belong to us, but there are gang leaders that are on the corner that they walk by every day when they go to school or to the store and gives them a little money and, and says, here, I know you need clothes. I need, they have this sense of belonging. Mm. It's a family. We never tell kids to leave a gang because that would be like me telling you to leave your wife and your child. Um, but uh, the thing is to show them that there are other ways of living and being that are healthy and not destructive. One of the things I'm stunned by is that you don't just go to the streets and talk to these folks, you invite them into your home. Absolutely. Are you not scared? Uh, no, I, I, that's crazy, right? Yeah, uh, that's crazy, <laughs> right. That's crazy, I mean, Amy. I mean, I have wisdom, okay. right? And so, um, and I have a great community of support and I have boundaries, uh, but at the end of the day, I want to be a safe space for them. Mm. And being a woman, it's a little different too, right? Because I can, I can cook dinner, I can be that safe space where they can be emotional, where they can really share their feelings, where um, I can be the auntie. And they do this with you. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm the auntie or the big sister on the block. What is your 
basic method to get these kids from a gang to God? I, my first method is I understand that that's not my job or my responsibility. Mm. God has to do that, mm. right? Like I can't transform anything. I mean, I don't even know what tomorrow looks like for me, mm. right? And I, I'm a hot mess. I need Jesus myself, <laughs> right? So um, the way that I understand and how to do this is that I just love them as they are. I show them that they have value and worth and, and it's not they and them, right? It's we and us. These are our kids, right? These are our young people that have experienced trauma, loss. They're lonely. They're scared. Um, I have to look through that gang thing and I have to see them the way that God sees them. And those are his babies. And uh, so that's just kind of how, how I look at it. And it just starts with building relationship and loving them and showing them other ways to do life. But ultimately it's up to them and God to decide if they want it dif a different life. Amy, there are parents watching all over the world mm -hmm. who are struggling because they have a child who got into a gang. Yeah. Could you give them at least one tip, one great idea, something they ought to do sure. to, to help their kids? Um, and there are so many things that you can do. The first thing is I would definitely be part of a community that can support you and encourage you, right? Because as parents, you, you need that support too, and you need tools. But I think one of the biggest things that I would encourage you is get a mentor, Find somebody that will love that kid as that kid in the gang, out of the gang, whatever, and just pour into them and walk life with them and be there with them and be a resource for them. I just uh, recently went to the um, Juvenile Justice Detention Center in Chicago, and we asked the kids, what would help you, right, to stay out of the gang and not come back to lock up? And they said, a safe space, keep us busy, and then an adult that will just, like, help us. And so hmm. parents, find a mentor for those young people, and then never stop praying. Mm. Never give up, never. Wow. That is a great piece of advice for everybody on every kind of crisis. Yeah. So grateful for what you're doing. And I Thank mean, to you. do it in the city of Chicago where mm. the murder rate is so high, gang activity is so intense, and so many innocent people get caught on the crossfire. See, yes. you're wearing your military jacket. Yes, we are at for war. Battle. Yeah, for our young people. It's not just the kid, the guys on the streets that are at war, but it's us as a loving community that we're at war, and we're going to fight for these kids. Um, they're ours. Well, right? you know, we have a segment on this show. We call it Huck's Hero, and you are, without a doubt, our Huck's Hero this oh, week for all you. that you're doing. And thank you for even opening our eyes to the fact that we don't just need to look at them from a distance and say they're hopeless. At all. Because you've reminded us you're a hope dealer. You're dealing in hope, and we all need to. Thank, Thank you, Amy. Thank you so what a much. a beautiful, beautiful story. Thank you. Mm. Let me encourage you to find out more about Amy's work in Chicago. You might consider inviting Amy to speak in your community. Her website is, this is lovely, <laughs> ahopedealer.org. Got that? Ahopedealer.org. And believe me, she's got plenty of hope for all of us.